Hello everyone! Merry Christmas. Can't remember when the last time I did a video was, so if I didn't see you after Christmas, then Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, guys, in a few days. I've popped into work at six o'clock. Do you know what? I don't even know what day it is today. What day is it? Monday the 29th of December. God, I've got another week off. I don't know what I'm going to do myself. I daren't tell you what I've been doing at home, guys. Don't let me loose with time. Put it that way. But I've come into a couple of parcels that were left over at Car Care. I think these are for the big, um, the big jobby that John's doing over there, the big tractor engine, which we had a bit of a nightmare with. Um, anyway... I wanted to do a little bit of a video today because I've had a cylinder head delivered to car care for myself off a great customer and a friend, Sam. The head that we're going to be having a look at today is a BMW M20 B25 water car. We did some work on this beginning of the year. Originally, it came in with just a cylinder head, wanted a bit of cylinder head work. The car had been standing for quite some time, undriven. Um, Sam wanted to go through the head at the very least. We got chatting, obviously being an, an E30 enthusiast myself. It wasn't long before we sort of took a little bit of a BMW bond between us. And I reminded him that I have a 2.8 crankshaft upstairs, brand new, that was bought when I bought my 325 E30 and um, the one that we're doing the M3 conversion to. When I bought that BMW, we all know it was a 325. It had an M20 engine in it on throttle bodies. Um, and the customer, before he sold the car or decided to sell the car to me, he, di he did buy a 2.8 crank. So that would be a 2.8 crank out of an E36. Can't remember the model of the, um, the actual engine code of that. I ended up buying it off him for two or 300 quid. And I thought, you know what? One day I'm going to build that motor into a stroker. We all know what these strokers are like, guys. They create massive torque, great power. Um, so I thought, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Shortly after, I bought the S50 engine and decided to sell the M20 with the throttle bodies for just over a grand. Much to Sam's annoyance when I told him how much I'd sold it for. But basically, I've convinced him to buy that crankshaft off me. Let us do at least the machining and the balancing, etc., to fit that crankshaft into the block and basically build a, a stroker motor. So that's exactly what we did. Sam built the motor, um, but we did all the machining, etc., and made sure it was all all right. Um, he bought some funky trick bits for it. Recently had it rolling roaded and it fetched really good power, I think. I'm not sure whether it was like 240 horsepower or something, but it needed a bit of work done to the ignition side of it, I think. Um, but yeah, great power. Can't remember the torque figures, but huge torque. Um, and it's a 2.8 litre now. So why is the cylinder head back in here? Well, he had some problems before he put the throttle bodies on. He had some problems with the ignition. I think it was the distributor was playing up. Don't know whether it was over fueling or what, but it ended up that recently when he got it mapped it ended up that the garage that had it um, to sort of have a look and get it set up and what have you put a camera down the balls and noticed that there was oil on a couple of the cylinders so I sort of asked Sam is it using oil no is it smoking no usually if it's not smoking on these older engines if it ain't smoking it ain't using oil there can't be a lot wrong with it but this garage was sort of convinced Sam that there may be a potential problem he did message me and say look what do you think? Um, we're suspecting stem seals. And I said, well, usual rule of thumb, if it ain't smoking and it's not using oil, then don't worry about it. A lot of people think that if it is, there sort of is oil and it's maybe around the valves, that it's gonna be guides or stem seals. You know, I normally say to them, well, with the head side of it, with the guides or the stem seals, bear in mind we've had new stem seals on it and the guides are all been done. If it is drawing, oil down the guides what's going to happen is when you're coasting in gear say down a hill and then you accelerate it's going to burn that excess oil then it's dragged down the guides past the seals or past the worn guide um, and it's going to come out the back as a cloud of blue especially with the oil grade that these engines use uh, but he said it wasn't doing that so it's very strange anyway he's decided to take the head off and we're going to be taking the valves out of the head now and having a look at the guides, having a look at the stem seals, see what we find, guys. But I suspect we probably won't find a lot. 
So let's go in the other room and let's have a look. So I've stripped out this head now, and as you can see, all this valve gear is in order. And this is what is behind these M20 B25 heads, or all the M20 heads. Um, so you've got a single cam. So here's the head here on our valve spring compressing machine. So you've got one single cam that runs through the center of the head, and you've got valves either side. So it's two valves per cylinder. So this is a 12 valve engine. So this is the pre-engine to the 24 valve, obviously. Um, and what we have done, this is a high lift cam here. So we are gonna be looking for, obviously we're gonna be checking the clearances afterwards, seeing what they were running. And we are gonna be looking for stem seal issues. And we're gonna be looking at valve guide issues. So set everything out. So what you've got here, you've got rockers, you've got rocker shafts, um, which run through the center of the rockers. Now these are a bit tricky to assemble and disassemble. So what you've got to do is you've got to get all the rockers, the tension off all the rockers. So whether you release these little, uh, there's like cams on the back here where you get your valve clearance. So you've got to slacken these off and still that isn't enough sometimes, especially with a high lift cam. So you have to take these clips off here which hold the the rocker in position you see these little grooves here in the the shafts so these here hold the rocker in the correct position slide over the top clip into these into the shaft where the little grooves are and it stops the rocker wondering so it's a little bit the same thing as like the cross flows uh, where we use a solid spacer to stop the thing wandering. Um, so you remove all these, you have to move these things after, even after you've, um, you've slackened off the cams, you've got to move the things over so they come off the valve um, and you've got some free play in there. Otherwise, you're not going to get these shafts out. So these shafts, the only thing that holds them in position in the cylinder head is this little jobby here. So that slides in between these two here and locates, obviously this is the front of the head and it locates in there and stops those shafts from wandering. Then either side, you can see you've got half moon cutouts either side of the head. And all you've got is you've got some little rubber bongs that go in there with a little bit of sealant and stops the oil from uh, coming out the end. So what we do, we remove, obviously remove this locating tool here and then what we do once we've moved all the rockers out slackened off the clearances or the cams there um, move the things off the end of the valves so we've got some clearance on all of them then that shaft will tap all the way through and out the heads so you can see there it goes all the way through so we haven't got like rocker shaft um, caps as such it just goes through the head and comes out here so once we removed all those guys we put everything in order and then we remove the springs. So we've got their double valve springs on this head because it's a nice big torquey high lift cam and we've left with the cam in there. So we can leave that in there for the time being. And what I'm gonna be looking for is some damage first of all on the, the valve stem seals. So what I do, I've removed the exhaust valves at the moment, but I've left the inlet valves in. And what I tend to do is just see how much resistance we have got on the valve by moving it up and down. And if that seal sort of holds the valve, you can feel the resistance. It generally means that the, the seals are good. Now, um, second thing, we remove these, and then what we do is we just, I just press on them, obviously visually inspect them, make sure that there's no cracks or anything like that. And then just feel the end of the seal and make sure it's nice and soft and not gone hard, which that is. It's, I mean, these were new seals anyway. Um, so the next thing I'm going to be doing, I've inspected them all. They all look good. I'm going to re remove these seals and just have a look underneath and make sure there's no tears or anything like that um, and make sure that the top of the guide's okay. And usually, once you remove the seals, you can see underneath where the rubber is clear of oil. It means that no oil has been getting up through past the seal internally and then down the guide that way. Once I've removed all them stem seals, guys, I'm gonna be making sure that all the valves are a nice fit in the guides. So this thing did have new guide sleeves in. And when I say sleeves, that is, um, we keep the existing guide in situ and then we use this sleeving kit. 
here. So that consists of a kit here. So this is an eight mil kit. So it consists of various sort of half a dozen ball bearings, all ranging a difference of about a thou, half a thou. Um, you've got a boring tool, which you sort of drive down the existing guide to bore it out. And then you've got these guide liners, which if I just get one from underneath, this is a phosphorus bronze guide liner. So you can see what the liner is, if I get it in the light, it's got a split down the center. See that there? And what you do, you use a tool, once you've bored it, you use a tool to drive this down the existing guide, like so, until it protrudes down the bottom and also leaves some protrusion at the top where the stem seal would go. Um, and then what we do, that then will be obviously too small because you pushed it in with an interference fit. And then what you do, is you drive down the ball, measuring the valve that you're using. So if you've got, the advantages with this, if you've got old valves where the stems are maybe slightly different to a new one, not worn as such, just a different size. Sometimes we have it where new valves are, are sort of a thou, thou and a half bigger. Um, then what you can do is you can size it exactly right. So you can use, we normally go for about two to three thou of clearance. Um, so you can pick your, your ball, drive that down the guide. What that does is spread, spread the guide liner out like that. Then you top the top, top the bottom, um, use a deburring tool either side, and then try your valve down until you get an absolute lovely fit. What you're aiming for is not hardly any side to side play, but you do want the valve to drop under its own weight. If you don't, you, um, the chances are when it all heats up, it could grab the liner. Um, and sort of nip the valve and then you get obviously a valve will stay open something like that so it's a great idea for getting it absolutely perfect when you've got maybe second hand valves and some new valves to be honest with you a lot of the time now if we put new the reason we use that if we put new guides in some of the new guides we've had where they're just there's so much excess clearance they're nearly as bad as the old ones so we'd rather stick a liner in the other advantages with these guide liners guys is if i just get one again they are serrated on the inside i don't know whether you can actually see that but internally they've got some little serrations which holds any sort of oil that does escape past or goes up it uses it as lubrication that is another advantage apparently they say and phos being phosphorus bronze they're not just normal bronze they're very tough and we tend to find once we've put a guide liner in there and done the job they don't tend to wear again so yeah really good and we've got them in all sizes so we've got them in metric and imperial over there every size you can think of really or you would ever need right so i'm going to whip these seals off guys and let's have a little look and see if we've got any play in the guides so guys we've got the cylinder head the other way up now all the valves removed if i get an inlet valve you can see first of all the back of the valves here all the inlets look lovely doesn't look like there's been any oil getting down the back of there. Exhausts are a little bit black. They do look like they've been burning a little bit of oil, but the stems look fairly clean, to be honest with you. So if I get an inlet valve, um, I have tried it down here, but that is, there is literally next to no play side to side whatsoever in these inlet guides. And you can feel nice, strong tension on the stem seal. So, Definitely, I would say there's nothing wrong there. The same with the exhaust. The exhaust, in fact, have got even less side-to-side -side play. Usually it's the exhaust that would wear more than the inlets. Um, but these have obviously all been done, all been sleeved and nice and tight and a lot of resistance on the stem seal. Now, the only thing is, whilst inspecting this cylinder head face, you can see there, obviously on the back of the exhaust guys, down the exhaust ports, and in the combustion chambers, it does look very black, sooty. You're obviously gonna have a little bit of black in where it's been sort of sooting up, but this build up here does look like excess oil. So I'm gonna be having a word with Sam, maybe popping down there and having a little look at his bores and um, seeing whether we've got, see what the bores look like, make sure there's no glazing. And also, um, maybe put some fluid down there see if we get any, any sort of pass by on the from the from the rings what we're looking for there is we're going to be looking for 
obviously making sure that the thing has run in properly and hasn't glazed up and the oil is coming past the rings, if any. It does look a little bit oily, but then again, as I say, it's only just run in and only just set up. So it could have been using a bit of oil past the rings, could have bedded in now. That's the reason it's not using any oil or smoking. At this stage, probably not majorly alarmed by that. Um, the only one thing I am slightly alarmed with is this thing was using a multi-layer steel head gasket, a competition gasket, and I can see, I do think that this thing around this area here is very slightly blowing a gasket. So what I'm gonna be doing is measuring the depth of the head from the surface of the head to the back where the washer would go on the head bolt, although I do think this is head stud and nuts, and just making sure that we've got enough thread protruding um, and there's nothing bottoming out and it's not sort of bottoming out on the bottom of the thread or what have you. So I'm gonna be having a measure of that on Sam's block with the studs in if it's stud and nuts, um, just making sure everything's clamping. He hasn't sent me the head gasket, although we never normally look at the head gasket, I'm gonna be having a little look at that. Um, and making sure there's no oil escaping from an oilway or something through the gasket. Um, and obviously having a look in this area here on the gasket and the block face and making sure that it's, it's not blowing and it hasn't damaged anything there. But um, it's not major, but I would say it is, um, I would say that probably at some point has started to just sort of blow a little gasket. Because what we normally do, you see around here, you can see where the gasket has been sealing. What we're looking for, I know it's a bit grubby, but what we're looking for is a nice clean line where the fire ring of the gasket will go on the head. And when you've got like a dark area like this, it means that really you're getting a little bit of blow by at some point. So maybe something to do with the fact that this has had a bit of ignition issue, but I'll have a chat with Sam when I get back on the fifth and uh, maybe pop down there, have a little look at his block. Nothing too alarming. Maybe just give it a very, very light lick over this thing. As a matter of course, we should just put some seals on, but I shall show Sam what these are like. There's absolutely nothing wrong with them. So nothing too alarming at this stage. It's probably just another gasket, set of seals, away we go. Job done. So guys, there we go, just a little techie today. Basically just showing you if we have a problem and someone brings in a head or a block or something like that, the routine in which we go to look at things and what we're actually looking for. Most people with like a head gasket issue, most people will bring the head gasket in and they'll say, I can't see a lot wrong with the head gasket unless they can see a big chunk blown out of it. They don't think there's a problem. But what we're looking at is different things. So we're looking at the head face, the block face, the head gasket we look at last, to be honest with you. So it's just a little routine of what we go through when we're actually looking for a problem. First of all, you've got to have a think about the problem, what could be causing the problem, and also whether the, what the customer thinks may be a problem, is it actually a problem? That's another thing we have to think about. Then you go through the routine of thinking logically and just checking all the engine components in a particular order. Um, as to what the problem could be and how it could be caused. So there we go, guys. Just a little techie video. If I don't do a video before New Year's Day, which I may well do, have a great New Year's Eve, guys, and uh, see you next year. But probably see you before next year. Cheers, guys. See you later. Bye.